Hello everyone, my name is the Mad Scorpion, and welcome to another elemental breakdown of the Prismatic subclass. If you can tell by the scorching sun in the background, I'm going to be talking about the solar parts of each subclass. Of course, if you don't know what this video is, I will be covering every aspect, fragment, ability, as well as every subclass verb you can look forward to seeing as a part of the solar bits of Prismatic. In addition to all the verbs and abilities, I will also be covering all three classes, as well as some exotics you can better use to hopefully take advantage of the solar parts of every prismatic subclass while you're looking for the better class item to represent prismatic using more so these as a stopgap. Starting off with these subclass verbs, the first that you will see and probably one of the most common ones is of course Radiant, which if you don't know what it does, your weapons are enhanced by the power of the Traveler and deal increased damage to combatants. While you're Radiant, every weapon is anti-barrier and can pierce barrier champions. Now, it is very handy. It is a simple plus 10% buff. It's very good just to have an extra oomph to almost anything. It makes every damage phase better and more worth it. From that point, there is, of course, the other main focus of basically fire with scorching target is singed by destructive solar light taking damage over time scorch damage increases as the target takes more scorch stacks after enough score stacks are applied to the target they ignite which if you don't know what that is a large solar explosion which deals damage in area around the target and stuns unstoppable champions if afflicted now if you don't know how that works as well scorch works as a 0 to 100 as soon as you reach 100 stacks of scorch you will hit ignition if you need an example of how to also better afflict it you can look at the solar grenades currently available you can see things like incendiary grenades where they pretty much say they heavily scorch targets which in in that description basically any other additional source of scorch will cause an ignition but then there is other things that are just basic scorch and also slightly scorching them think the more scorch they gain of course the closer they are to ignitions or the less it is the more it will take to cause ignitions Moving on from those debuffs and buffs, there is of course the healing part of Solar with Cure and Restoration. Now there is a weird line between what Cure and Restoration is. Think of Cure as temporary health where it is just literally instant heal. Let's just say you get one third of your total health back at once. Of course there is variety that can be Cure times two or times three you'll find. But think of it just as a plain bump to your health. While Restoration will trigger health regeneration and it will go over time and it won't be stopped. If you take damage, it'll still continue as long as you have time on the active timer. Now one last bit, it is not a buff or debuff, but it is the elemental pickup to keep track of for solar, and that is the fire sprites, which with a variety of ways to earn them, you gain grenade energy when picking up fire sprites on the field. Something to keep track of if you're looking to focus more so into your grenades. With all the subclass verbs out of the way, it's time to take a look at the abilities that you'll have access to for the Solar Hunter. Starting off, you have the Marksman Golden Gun, which is probably the better option between at least the two Golden Guns. This is just straight up damage. Anytime you summon it, of course, you can gain orbs of power, and it does benefit from being Radiant, so it, of course, is a self-buff. From that point as well, you will start out with any of the dodges that are available, as well as the Acrobatics Dodge, which does apply Radiant as well if you want just quick, rapid damage damage from there the ability that is around is knife trick which is of course the three melee uh, or three knives that go out flying that scorch targets on hit which also can cause ignitions if you have enough scorch from there you do have the swarm grenade which is a pretty solid one of all of the options basically just throw out small cluster bombs that will track out targets anytime they come near slightly scorching things from that point, the aspect they have access to is the Gunpowder Gamble, which recently has been quite nifty. After doing damage with solar abilities or solar weapons, or basically anything solar, you will charge a improvised solar explosive on your grenade ability. And when you throw it out, it actually causes quite the explosion and ignitions. So this is something that I'd actually look forward to mixing with a variety of other classes on top of just plain solar. Now, looking at some of these specific solar options for exotic armors, there is one or two letdowns, unfortunately, but one that I am not going to be let down is Celestial Nighthawk. This, of course, is famously used for Marksman Golden Gun and is afflicted by it. This is honestly just a straight up good option as well, just matching up with Prismatic. Having just straight up more damage on a subclass that is different than straight up solar is just plain good. From that point as well, I would recommend Caliban's Hand. Unfortunately, 
the way that it is set up. We don't have access to explosive knife, so you would just hopefully have to get the Caliban out of the class item to make use of this exotic perk if you're looking forward to that. Same with Young Am Hakara Spawn that deals with trip mines, so unfortunately I can't actually vouch for it because otherwise it wouldn't be used. And that also goes to Atheris's Embrace, sadly, because obviously that works for throwing knives specifically. However, one that I could fully recommend is Shards of Galanor. Recently got reworked so that your fan blades will also re uh, reduce your super energy return. So this is something that I actually would recommend if it was simple or at the same time if you don't want pure super energy from the knives. However, you want to get the advantage on Blade Barrage's energy return. Going into the rest of the neutral game exotics, it would be some of the same ones that I've recommended in videos before. Assassin's Cowl is always an option, especially considering you'll have access to your knives pretty consistently. Foe Tracer, if you just want to go full solar, although of course prismatic, meaning you will have access to more elements, there is an option there. And from there, it is the usual that I always recommend, things like Frosties for ability regen, or things like Lucky Pants for damage, Star Eater Scales, of course, as always, it just overcharge orbs as well as overcharge super from that point though there like i said uh, sadly there isn't many options you can go with unless there's literally something like a video space for more throwing knives it's just unfortunately quite limited because of the selection a lot of the unique exotics are left out and from that point let's go ahead and swap over to our spicy titans now continuing on to our burning power lifters with our titans the first ability is a solid pick for these solar supers of course because it is just straight up hammer of soul Bursting, exploding, scorching, singeing, cluster bomb, hammers. Great for ad clear, solid enough damage on its own. However, of course, that means we don't have access to Burning Maul, which I'll get into more of why that's unfortunate in a bit. From that point, our melee is the simple Hammer Strike, which is the Swords of Charge ability. It does Scorch on hit, and if they're defeated by the Hammer Strike, they straight up ignite. Solid enough option. I know, unfortunately, though, a lot of people are looking forward to throwing Hammer, but I feel like throwing Hammer on a variety of classes might have been too OP. And from that point as well, we do have the Thermite Grenade, which is probably best on Titans. It is just multiple waves of basically wave frame grenade launcher hits. It does Scorch and Multiplicity, so a solid option there for denying a room. And as well, the funnest one of the subclass aspects is Consecration. Where sliding, you can melee and cause a initial uppercut as well. Hitting the slam the second time will cause a second wave that will ignite anything in its path. This is honestly probably the most fun of all the aspects available on any Titan subclass, just because Uppy's Titan is just, like I said, plain fun. Now, you will actually have a few odd options, but not some of the best ones, because Kepri's Horn, I can't believe I'm recommending this, but this is an option. I know I've seen some weird videos popping up of interesting builds using Kepri's Horn. Of course, it doesn't exactly feed into the Solar subclass, it just causes some scorching when you spawn your barricade, as well as just having a quick recharge barricade with Solar Final Blows. One that I would partially recommend, of course, is Lordly Splendor, which does work with Solar, obviously, but without ready access to the Sunspot, I don't know if it'll actually straight up work. It does say it just spawns a Sunspot, but I know in the past, having Sunspots but not having the perk that benefits from Sunspots kind of clashed and didn't work. So I possibly something to keep an eye out for. But from that point, there is one other thing that I would recommend, possibly, and un I really quick though, I'm just going to mention not Ash and Wake, because unfortunately the Honey Bun build won't work with Thermite Grenades. But of course, the main thing I would recommend is always Hollow Fire Heart, which I don't know if this is going to apply to a variety, but basically, anything solar while setting a spawn spot creates more sunspots, and at the same time, improving the recharge rate of solar abilities, and even better when your super is charged will massively improve your recharge ability and a small bonus to aerial effectiveness for you crucible players out there however at the same point i don't know if this will work with more of the things because it does just say oh, solar abilities so while this might work if you have more than one solar ability while i'm prismatic unfortunately i don't think it would apply to many of the other elements so just keep that in mind then as always there is path of the burning steps which can of course, work with solar and is anti-stasis. Keep in mind for the stasis adjudicators out there. But, you know, it's solar. So depending on how much you build into it is how much you get back. So just keep in mind. And once again, more things that I will say to avoid is, of course, things like Phoenix Cradle and Pyrogale. As Phoenix Cradle relies upon sunspots and you want to have ready access to sunspots with the aspects available. And as well, Pyrogale, of course, works with Burning Maul, which as we know, we won't have Burning Maul. We'll only have the 
basic Hammer of Soul, so we won't be able to take use of our classic Uppy Slam, unfortunately. From that point, though, I would always recommend the usual neutral game exotics. I can actually recommend Peregrine Greaves because it does have access to a shoulder charge, as well as always Heart of Inmost Light because just I don't have to explain it, but I shall. Basically, using any of your abilities will just improve the recharge rate of other abilities, straight up. Then there is, of course, Alpha Loopy that you can always look forward to. It's more Crucible focused, but this, of course, is an option. Armentarian for more Thermite Grenades. As well, there is always the basics of Icefall Mantle, which I do believe applies on more than just basic. Worm God's Caress, always an option, especially Hammer Strike will do a lot of damage there. And the classic Syntheseps for more damage when surrounded. But that is the full extent of the list, like I mentioned with the Hunters. A lot of the unique solar helmets and other exotics unfortunately don't seem to apply to what we have access to for Titans. So we might just have to look for the broad variety class items if we want to spec out a little bit more solar-wise. And for the Warlocks, there will be lots of new to look forward to with the solar aspects of Prismatic because they have two new things to look forward to, the first being the Song of Flame Super, which is a callback to original Destiny 1, basically Radiant, you get in charge grenades, you get in charge melee, you have restoration. Think of it just as solar tank mode. But from that point, as well, class builds, you have access to all of them, including Phoenix Dive. However, that last bit about Scorching and Restoration improving with Heat Rises, you will have to forget about. More on that in a bit. The two abilities you have will, of course, be Incinerator Snap, which is a personal favorite of mine. It does heavily Scorch anything, and anything that is currently Scorched will ignite when it gets hit by it. So, just keep that in mind in case you want to make things go boom. And always the helpful healing grenade, which grants cure and restoration, so it gives you a burst of healing while also applying heal over time. Just a good emergency throw in case you need some help. Unfortunately though, for aspects, we don't have anything we currently have access to, so no buffed solar grenades. But we do have something better, and that is the solar soul, which, if you have been keeping track, basically is going to be a little solar energy buddy that will hang out on your shoulder and just will spit fire at your enemies like M&M. From that point though, there isn't much to look forward to for solar abilities that, like I said, it is quite restrictive on the Warlock. It is basically just melee, snap, and, of course, lots of buffs. It's hard to tell if they're going to be majorly offensive on the point of abilities or just have many, many buffs to go on the offensive four. Now, unfortunately with Prismatic, I am, of course, seeing a pattern that is the reason why they probably added the class abilities that are broader. Things that make solar warlocks good are of course not going to be available dawn chorus because no daybreak not re recommended same with sun bracers and you can see where this is going from here most of the solar specific things that work for solar warlocks are not going to be available of course again no phoenix protocol for no well promethium spur because no dawn blade but you see what i'm saying you can still use boots the assembly which always seems solar in its aspect but that does feel more neutral game same with rain of fire it does see but then again that is more crucible based anyway when i look at it so i can only really recommend most of the usual with ones i would recommend battle harmony chromatic fire in case you're looking for ideas on individual same with starfire i cannot wholeheartedly recommend that just because again we won't have fusion grenades so it will be impossible to take advantage of them but from that point again the usual recommendations i would give i have another world verity's brow the stag for rift energy apotheosis veil for energy after supers depending on how potent um, new song of flame can be there is options there but that is pretty much the same thing now i can tell there is a pattern here of course the limited options available on Prismatic does hamper how many normal exotics we have access to, but again, that is why they are creating the class ability exotics that is just straight up broad options, not to mention mixing, so things that weren't readily available can be used on a more broad aspect. Now, as always, starting from top to bottom, the first recommendation that I will always have, as I have in the two previous videos, is Traveler's Chosen, which is just straight up, you kill things, you build charge, you can consume charge, get all your ener energy and abilities back. There is no real argument for using this, or against using this, aside from the fact that it is just a sidearm, that is probably the only reason that I would say not using it, because it is nifty, you just have to bear using an exotic sidearm. From that point, of course, there is conditional finality if you have access to it, which the first half is not important, but the second half is in terms of the solar ability, because, of course, if you can hit all your shots, you can just straight up cause an ignition anytime. So very handy to lean into your solar. 
From that point, there is, of course, the usual element changers with Borealis, Hardlight, and Tessellation. I can always recommend that will change depending on the super you have equipped, as well as the element you pick, so you can always have Solar on hand. Then there is Sunshot, the classic hand cannon causing infinite explosions that I will always recommend for any solar build, even with its upcoming nerf, losing a bit of its splash damage. And then, of course, there is Merciless, which is just a straight-up damage dump fusion rifle. It being solar can, of course, easily benefit from Radiant and charge a lot of your solar builds. If you need solar damage, this is a really good source of it. From that point, though, there isn't many others that I might recommend other than Polaris Lance, Ariana's Vow, and Taraba for your energy weapon ones, just because, again, this will be buffed so it can cause ignitions on piercing. Taraba is always great for quick damage. Polaris Lance causing explosions like crazy this season. But then, from that point, there is plenty of other options. There's just not many that I could say is, well, worth it. Because Tiku's is nifty, but it hasn't really seen the limelight nowadays for some reason. Devil's Ruin is anti-champion, but it is, of course, again, a sidearm. Tommy's Matchbook... I don't, don't think I need to say anything else than that, just because it is self-harm. Then there, duality, but then again, that is simple. Vex Mythic Class, but again, this is a simple option. Something I would personally recommend is Hierarchy of Needs, because I don't know if you've seen what I use in GMs, but this thing can shred, but of course, it is very situational for the average person. For the Warlocks, I might actually recommend the Edge of Intent Sword, just or Glaive, just because, again, Healing Turret, I believe it was buffed semi-recently, but I haven't used it in the wild, so I couldn't wholeheartedly recommend recommend it. But from that point, in terms of solar, of course, 1,000 voices scorching the world, something I would pick. Sleeper Simulant, ripping holes through everything and ricocheting, another option. The scorching from Two-Tailed Fox may not be so beneficial on solar subclasses and prismatic, but still options. And from that point, Xenophage is a straight up hard power, air apparent if you want to tank it out a little bit, and then Eyes of Tomorrow if you're looking to raise the world. Now, Lament is getting a slight nerf, so again, the community said rest in peace, Lament, but I don't think it's going to be that bad, so always keep an eye out for that. Of course, Anti-Barrier, Classic, Galahorn, Parasite, and of course, Dragon's Breath. There's many options there for Solar, Scorching, Damage, or Support if you need weapon recommendations. Honestly, most of the things that are just straight up Solar, I would wholeheartedly recommend, aside from some of the more basic ones that, aside from being Solar, they are not really subclass relevant. But with that, that is the end of the solar part of Prismatic. I hope you enjoyed this video, and keep in mind, I do have two other videos currently already out on Arc and Void. If you are looking forward to Strand or Stasis, I will have them coming out in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. Of course, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and always make sure to keep an eye out for future videos, whether it's just going to be news, details, or a what the hell is happening in Bungie moment. With that... My name is Matt Scorpion. I will see you in the next video.